Welcome to the Live Fit Listens podcast, a safe space of growth, personal development, and overall wellness with your host, Olivia Catania, diving into the realms of all things health, conscious living, mental expansion, and much more. This podcast is designed to help you evolve into your best self and live fit. Let's get into the show. Hello, hello, my beautiful people. What's up? Welcome back to the Live Fit Listens podcast, episode number two of 2022. Eh, eh. Super freaking stoked. I hope everyone has had a good start to the new year so far. If not, don't worry. It's still early, still plenty of time to get after it. Also, I know that sometimes the beginning of the year can seem like overwhelming because there's so many things you want to do, things you want to implement, changes you want to pursue. But just know everything takes time. It's not going to be this magical stroke at midnight that changes everything. So don't don't worry, you're doing your best. And if you're not doing your best, make sure you're giving your best and doing your best to be able to give your best. <laughs> and, you know, just make sure you're doing what you can. I'm super excited for this year. I'm not going to lie. Last night, I was just like, I literally could, I was trouble, like having trouble falling asleep because I just felt so excited, like for life. Like, and I just, a lot of kind of things, I guess I found out some things, some opportunities yesterday and so I just was like really excited and kind of juiced up and I was like trying to go to bed and I was like wait but there's so many different things that could happen this year and da 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 and I don't know I just feel like I've been feeling a lot of potential like not only within me but also in life and That honestly leads me to my gratitude, what I'm grateful for. I'm feeling so freaking grateful just for the opportunities and the potential and like the abundance that's like in life. Like, I don't know. I just I've been feeling like I say I've been this is like within the past 12 hours. But like I just lately I've been feeling like I could do anything like the world is my oyster, like possibilities are endless. I don't know. And I know that it's like obviously easier said than done. But I just like it's just, you know, sometimes you just get those bursts of like inspiration. And like, that's what I feel. I feel so inspired and just feeling like I can do anything that I say that I want to do if I put in the action and like make the change to make my dreams come into fruition and like change my reality. And so, yeah, just I feel like I've been on that wavelength, I guess, because yesterday morning, it didn't start off that way. Yesterday morning, I actually was super down. I kind of got bad ish news a little bit, which wasn't even that big of a deal, but I like let it really like determine my self worth for whatever the case may be. My friend Dennis always says, don't let your external environment dictate your internal environment. It's so freaking true. But, anyways, so I kind of was feeling down and I was like, damn, like I was getting nervous, like about being able to pursue like lift it and all that sort of stuff. And then, of course, like just later that day, I got like so juiced up again and like lit the hope, I guess, within me and the passion within me and that like the self-belief in me, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm grateful for today, because truly there really is so much potential and abundance in life. If you see it as such back to throw back to the episode where I talked about it's all perspective, you can choose to see it that way. Right. Or you can think it's a hard life with a lot of pain, a lot of struggle with not a lot of opportunity. So it's up to you to see what side um, you want to see what bu- side of the bus you want to be sitting on right to look out which which window and see which viewpoint. But for me, man, I am on the freaking side of the bus where I'm looking over the cliff with all of the beautiful beauty that I'm seeing. And I just feel like lots of opportunities around us, lots of potential, lots of things to tap into. And that's what I'm feeling like lately. So on that note of potential, being able to maximize our potential, I feel like reading has really allowed me to maximize my potential as an individual, learn so much, grow, expand, evolve as a person. And I just am like really excited about it. And so in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you, I think I have six books here. Yeah, six books that like completely changed my life. I read these in 2021. So last year, except I just finished a book today, which I'll tell you, and they completely changed the game for me, like truly. And I did read other books last year but these are the ones that like really really did it for me like really made an impact like were a very good use of my time when I was reading these things so let me tell you something though I was never a reader I never was my older sister Sophia the one right above me she shout out Soph (laughs) she always has been a reader like kind of like like Harry Potter like she loves like um, fantasy books and things like that. So like growing up, she was always into Harry Potter or, or things like that. Or like, I remember like the Hunger Games, the Divergent series, all that sort of stuff. And so she just always was like, I guess, kind of the reader of the family. And I kind of always wanted to be that way. Also really weird side story, but I used to 
pretend to read books when I was little and I would pretend to make lists. That's a story for a different day. But so I always had that like weird urge where it's like I liked the feeling of like, I don't know, kind of like getting stuff done, I guess, in the sense of reading and like making progress in terms of like this is increasing my value as a human, I guess. But anyways, that's kind of all side stuff there. But basically I had a goal last year. I just tried to slyly put my arm on these books for a armrest and it just didn't work because this sleeve is as big as a freaking balloon. But anyway, I had a goal to finish a book every other month. That was a resolution that I had last year. And like I said, I never read consistently and I would like try and I just like wouldn't ever finish books. But that was a goal that I had set for myself that was actually super attainable. And it was a very reasonable goal for me considering the pace that I read at and for coming from someone who doesn't read. So if you're wanting to become a reader, I really suggest putting in that goal. That's only six books in the whole year. It's a pretty slow pace, but it just like since it was manageable, it allowed me to stick with it but it wasn't like too long of a time where it like had me lose interest in that time period you know what I'm saying so anyways I'm just gonna get started I'm gonna share with you guys many takeaways from each book what each book kind of entails I'm gonna read you guys little blurbs from each one so you guys can kind of get a snippet of it and understand like the tone of how it's written and kind of what is in here and hopes to have you able to better realize like which one what books you would resonate most with through here so I'm kind of gonna start with roughly like the least impactful to me to like the most impactful roughly it kind of was hard at the end to try to like put them in a higher archy like a definitive order so it kind of the order blurs at the end but I'm also going to list every single book and link the book in the show notes as well so if you're wanting to get one no need to fear friends just go to the show notes okay so number six we have how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. It says the only book you need to lead you to success. This is a super famous book like up there with Think and Grow Rich. Like this I feel like is iconic. I used to hear about this book all the time. This I would say is a great book if you're like into business but not only that like if you just struggle with talking to people and working with people like kind of maybe if you have social anxiety you're like you know some people are just like smooth talkers and they just like know how to talk to people and work with people if you feel like that's not you then this book could really help you and for me like especially I don't know like I don't want to say I was ever like awkward but like definitely like 17, 18, 19, 20, I kind of would struggle with like how to handle people, I guess, or how to talk to people. And I feel like I really have come into my own. And I think it's a different accumulation of a few different things. I think I've just been more in tune with my authentic self. So I'm able to show up more authentically when I talk to people and older people and adults now. But I also do think in part it's because of this book a little bit and how to like appropriately talk to people. So this one taught me a lot of people skills and specifically like in more of like the business setting or in terms of negotiation and things like that. And just like even working with people in terms of like adversity or in cases of conflict or in cases of differences of opinions. So again, this isn't super spiritual book. I would say this is definitely more like kind of self-help situation or like self-improvement that I would say. But this book basically is kind of off of the principle of like, it's not about what you say, but how you say it. That's what I always tell people when I try to like like give them this book in short like it's kind of really built off of that whole principle so it's kind of like telling you different and explains like different ways and things like that to say things or approach situations to help kind of improve your delivery of it in order to help the uh the perception of it from the person you're speaking with in order to help just like overall have it be a more successful interaction if that makes sense Um, and it talks about how like things like it's important to acknowledge what someone's doing right before like you deal out criticism to them um, and like making the other person actually want to do what you are suggesting in the first place like that sort of thing which like Honestly, when I read this at first, I kind of struggled because I was like, is this like manipulation, like that sort of thing? But in all honesty, it's I've learned and like seen that it's like truly really not. It's just like how you go about the situation, right? It's like the same thing about like how I say again, going back to how everything's perspective where it's like the same principle. You're just looking at it from a different way. That's the same thing with this book. It's like not necessarily manipulation. It's still the same thing, the same foundational principle, but it's just teaching you how to look at it in a different way or deal with it from a different angle. That's just making it more successful for all parties involved. So it's honestly very interesting. It's kind of a little bit dry because of like the structure of it. It's kind of um, set up in terms of like stories and like through examples. So like I said, it's a little dry. It took me a while to get into it, but the takeaways really are great. By the end of it, I was like, wow. And I actually applied this book 
way more than um, I thought I would. I will say it's broken down into four parts. So first is fundamental techniques in handling people, six ways to make people like you, how to win people to your way of thinking, and lastly, be a leader, how to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. So like I said, I found myself really using this in terms of kind of like more of the business realm. So um, when it comes to like negotiating brands and writing emails, I use this a lot, <laughs> how I structure my emails, that sort of thing coming to a brand deal. So just in general, I think this is a really good like personal development book overall is what I would want to describe it as. So I want to read a few blurbs so you guys can kind of get a taste of what this book is about. So this is under the chapter of how to win people to your way of thinking. It says seeing things through another person's eyes may ease tensions when personal problems become overwhelming. Elizabeth Novak of New South Wales, Australia, was six weeks late with her car payment. On a Friday, she reported I received a nasty phone call from the man who was handling my account informing me that if I did not come up with $122 by Monday morning, I could anticipate further action from the company. I had no way of raising the money over the weekend, so when I received this phone call first thing on Monday morning, I expected the worst. Instead of becoming upset, I looked at the situation from his point of view. I apologized most sincerely for causing him so, many, so much inconvenience and remarked that I must be his most troublesome customer as this was not the first time I was behind in my payments. His tone of voice changed immediately and he reassured me that I was far from being one of the his really troublesome customers. He went on to tell me several examples of how rude his customers sometimes were, how they lied to him, and how often tried to avoid talking to him at all. I said nothing. I listened and let him pour out his troubles to me. Then without any suggestion from me, he said it did not matter if I couldn't pay all the money immediately. It would be all right if I paid him $20 by the end of the month and made up the balance whenever it was convenient for me to do so. Tomorrow, before asking anyone to put out a fire or buy your product or contribute to your favorite charity, why not pause and close your eyes and try to think the whole thing through from another person's point of view? Ask yourself, why would he or she want to do it? So kind of things like that where it just allows you to kind of be smarter, I guess, when dealing with people. And things like that, like, for example, how the fact that, like, she kind of owned up to it, um, owned her faults, owned her inconvenience to the owner, just that, like, kind of exposing and owning up to, I guess, your own weaknesses, if you will, already inevitably will soften the other person and will allow them to respond in a less, like, defensive way as they might have if you kind of fought back and said, oh, I can't do the payment because X, Y, Z, and you didn't give me enough time, that's going to cause conflict, where if you kind of soften and just, like, almost expose yourself, it kind of deloads the gun from the other person and it's able to kind of create a more peacemaking space, things like that, where it just kind of helps you like deal with situations. So it's kind of interesting, not your average book, but it did do a lot for me. Next book that I'm going to say. So again, this is a really, really good book, but compared to the other ones, that's why I put it coming in spot number five. So this is actually my first book that I ever read by Alan Watts. It's literally called The Book by Alan Watts. Alan Watts is a philosopher. Um, I kind of knew of him already from like I would see his things like some of his stuff on YouTube or like even on um, SoundCloud, there would be like um, little snippets of him like speaking. So that's kind of how I knew of him. And then I saw this book in the store and I was like, wait, I'm so stoked. So this book is honestly super philosophical. I um, mean, it's a super abstract way of looking at the world and it's super interesting. So this is definitely more spiritual, more philosophical, like I'm saying. So this one, the main principle, um, it literally at the bottom, it says on the taboo against knowing who you are. So this talks about how all of us, the universe, everything is truly all one. We're all just parts of the same whole, that sort of thing. And he does a really interesting way of kind of explaining that whole concept how we're like a wave in the same ocean so it really does touch on the notion of like the ego and how we constantly see ourselves because this is how we were brought up and what we were taught we see ourselves as like separate beings from everything around us when in reality like we're all just expressions different expressions of life and of the universe but just in different ways so it's super profound and another reason why I really really enjoyed this and why it was almost like kind of peaceful to read it was because like since it's built off the notion that everything is connected and everything is one it also built off the fact that like you need the opposite of one thing in order to provide the contrast to make that first thing come into fruition like you because we always say like thing there's certain things that are bad right that we don't want to happen but his whole point is like you need those quote-unquote bad or unfavorable instances to give the contrast so we can recognize when 
there is a good thing there or to or to create if you think about it those good things wouldn't exist without the contrast of the bad things is essentially the point and it was really just like a really beautiful way to explain the bad I'll read the part in here with what I mean um and it kind of like the analogy was that like it explains the bad things in life as like the the troughs or the low points of the waves and we need them to be able to give life to the peak of the wave like that sort of thing it also touched on religion a little bit as well so keep that in mind I will say if you are super if you identify as catholic or really um you know a certain specific religion this may kind of uh trigger you a little bit or really question your beliefs so just keep that in mind so more than anything I just think it was a really beautiful read and I think the analogies that he used in here were also super beautiful and insightful and profound and he just has like definitely a really whoa Mike went AWOL again. He just has a really like beautiful perspective and like way of saying things, I guess. Okay. In terms of the blip it, I'm going to, I don't know if blip it's a word, but I'm saying it. Okay. So this is what I mean when he says like how we need the quote unquote bad things to give life to the good. So this is what it says in the book. It says, in other words, we do not play the game of black and white, the universal game of up, down, on, off, solid space in each all. Instead, we play the game of black versus white, or more usually white versus black. For especially when rates of vibration are slow as with day and night or life and death, we are forced to be aware of the black or negative aspect of the world. Then not realizing the inseparability of the positive and negative poles of the rhythm, we are afraid that black may win the game. But the game, white must win, is no longer a game. It is a fight. A fight haunted by a sense of chronic frustration because we are doing something as crazy as trying to keep the mountains and get rid of the valleys. Which I was like, I've never heard that be explained so well. So like his whole concept is that like, everything like every when I say the opposites like there's two different poles like there's polarity of everything that's what makes something like in order to have something like in order for this book to make up matter like there needs to be empty space around it to give the contrast to have this like book be coming into appearance so you wouldn't even know it was there you know what I'm saying so it's kind of like you everything is connected in that sense where like you need space in order to create matter you need silence in order for there to be sound that sort of thing and so it's kind of like he's saying that like you need the polarity of like having the bad things in order to be able to see the good things or else they wouldn't exist because they're parts of the same whole I just loved that and I loved the way that he said it and this one I also really loved it says once you have seen this you can return to the world of practical affairs with the new spirit you have seen that the universe is at root a magical illusion in a fabulous game that there is no separate you to get some out of it as if life were a bank to be robbed the only real you is the one that comes and goes manifests and withdraws itself eternally in and as every conscious being for you is the universe looking at itself from billions of points of views points that come and go so that the vision is forever new what we see as death empty space or nothingness is only the trough between the quests of this endlessly waving ocean it is all part of the illusion that there should seem to be something to be gained in the future and that there is an urgent necessity to go on and on until we get it. Yet just as there is no time but the present and no one except the all and everything, there is never anything to be gained through the zest of the game is to pretend that there is. So just like super freaking cool perspective about life and it's it's just it's so thought provoking. I love it. Okay, and last one, which I thought this was absolutely just stunning, and just kind of speaks on how like magical we are as beings, and just how magical life is, and just how amazing it is that it is to just be a being. How is it possible that a being with such sensitive jewels as eyes, such enchanted musical instruments as the ears, and such a fabulous arabesque of nerves as the brain can experience itself as anything less than a god? And when you consider that this incalculably subtle organism is inseparable from the still marvelous patterns of its environment, from the minutest electrical designs to the whole company of the galaxies, how is it conceivable that this incarnation of all eternity can be bored with being? Like that, I was like, wow. Just absolutely beautifully said so that's a super interesting book 
um, more so just kind of a perspective shift. I wouldn't necessarily say like self-help or personal development or anything like that. Just kind of giving you a different perspective to look at life through. Okay, this is where it gets hard. The next four books, it was kind of hard to put in order. Um, I struggled that this one is in number four because this book was such an amazing book as well. But compared to the others, this is where it is. So this is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Th- I have this on my outline. This book is underrated in caps because it is. I have her. I actually found this, okay, via Instagram. But I do not think it gets enough credit. I think the other ones I'm going to tell you do. This one, I think, is under the radar and it's so good. This book clearly states everything so well and it's a super easy read. Like, he said everything so clearly. But yeah, I remember every time I, like, I just felt like everything was always so profound. But yeah, like, it wasn't hard for me to read. Like, the two other ones I'm about to show you, they're kind of like, I would have to read them a few times. Like, even the, the book that I just showed you, I would have to, like, read the lines a few times because it kind of went over my head. This one, I feel like everything was said so clearly and concisely and so well put but yet it was so profound like the amount of underlines I have in this book is absurd um and I just absolutely love this book and I flew through it and it just is it's it's just so beautiful and I really can't recommend this book enough so this one is amazing because it really talks a lot about consciousness and what it means and what it means to gain awareness and sitting in the seat of consciousness and it really talks a lot about your consciousness in relation to who you are one of the chapters is who are you um and it talks about like your emotions and your thoughts and like your consciousness in relation to your thoughts and your emotions and it just so eloquently like describes the difference between those things and how to not identify with your thoughts and emotions and identifying with the thought in your with the voice in your head like it fully addresses that voice that we have in our mind and kind of addresses it as like your roommate but it's not necessarily like who you actually are um, and it talks about how to like manage your emotions in more of like a healthy way I guess if you will but not in the sense of like therapy like in the sense of consciousness like your higher being like your higher self of how to sort through those emotions like it doesn't think like I'm telling you it doesn't have the undertone of like a self-help therapy book this is like changing your perspective and like elevating your consciousness as a human to kind of rise above those thoughts and emotions that sort of thing And it just like gave me a whole new freaking perspective about like how our mind works and what goes on in our mind. And like I said, explains like consciousness and what true awareness really means. And like this just shifted my perspective so much. I honestly, when I was looking through this again to outline this episode, like I want to read this again because... I don't know I just I just remember because I like wasn't really expecting it to be that impactful so maybe that's why I feel like it was so good but like I was constantly like no way he just said that no way because every time I was like that was just so freaking great the sections of it like just sound I remember reading the contents or like the table of contents and I was like this sounds amazing part one awakening consciousness part two experiencing energy Part three, freeing yourself. Part four, going beyond. Part five, living life. It just is like, ugh, it's so good. Okay, here we go. Let's read you some some blibbits. Once you clearly see the disturbed part, then ask, who is it that sees this? Who notices this inner disturbance? Asking this is the solution to your every problem. The very fact that you can see the disturbance means that you are not it. The process of seeing something requires a subject-object relationship. The subject is called the witness because it is the one who sees what's happening. The object is what you are seeing, in this case, the inner disturbance. This act of maintaining objective awareness of the inner problem is always better than losing yourself in the outer situation. This is the essential difference between a spiritually minded person and a worldly person. Worldly does not mean that you have money or stature. Worldly means that you think the solution to your inner problems is in the outside world. You think that if you change things outside, you'll be okay. But nobody has ever truly become okay by changing things outside. There's always the next problem. The only real solution is to take the seat of witness consciousness and completely change your frame of reference. To attain true inner freedom, you must be able to objectively watch your problems instead of being lost in them. No solution can possibly exist while you're lost in the energy of the problem. And then a little bit down further 
And then a little bit down further along the paragraph, it says, this involves a change from outer solution consciousness to inner solution consciousness. You have to break the habit of thinking that the solution to your problems is to rearrange things outside. The only permanent solution to your problems is to go inside and let go of the part of you that seems to have so many problems with reality. Okay, amazing concept. This kind of speaks on behalf of how like you're separate from your thoughts and emotions. It says when you are an aware being, you are no longer completely immersed in the events around you. Instead, you remain inwardly aware that you are the one who is experiencing both the events and the corresponding thoughts and emotions. When a thought is created in the state of awareness, instead of getting lost in it, you remain aware that you are the one who is thinking the thought. You are lucid. So that's kind of what I mean when it says it kind of um, made me aware of like the space that we have between our thoughts and our emotions and our mind and like who we truly are. So it really allowed me to like see my emotions in a different light, I guess, if you will. And then this kind of explains it in like the TV analogy, like consciousness in terms of when you're watching TV. So it says, once you become conscious of the consciousness itself, you remember attain a totally different state you are now aware of who you are you have become an awakened being it is just the most natural thing in the world here i am here i always was it's like you have been on the couch watching tv but you were so totally immersed in the show that you forgot who you where you were someone shook you and now you're back in the awareness that you're sitting on the couch watching tv nothing else changed you simply stopped projecting your sense of self onto that particular object of consciousness. You woke up. That is spirituality. That is the nature of self. That is who you are. As you pull back into the consciousness, this world ceases to be a problem. It's just something you're watching. It keeps changing, but there is no sense of that being a problem. The more you are willing to just let the world be something you're aware of, the more it will let you be who you are. The awareness, the self the atman, the soul. Okay, like, thank you. So those are my two little blurbs from there. I'm telling you, super interesting. It's a, honestly a pretty quick read as well. And it like completely transformed my perspective. Definitely recommend that one. Okay, next one. These ones were, are, I have to say, these are tied for third and second place. Um, it was really hard for me to put one over the other. I'm not even going to be dramatic. Like I genuinely think about this like in my day to day, which one I liked better because both of these are by the author Eckhart Tolle. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Like I... This is a debate within myself about which book I liked more. So first one is A New Earth and the other one is The Power of Now. These are super famous books and A New Earth underneath it says Awakening to Your Life's Purpose. So this one I read a, a year ago now, so it's not as clear in my mind, um, but I remember this one talks a lot about ego and this one really helped me to divide like and fully understand what the difference is between your ego and your higher self as well as the power of now, but so as well with this one. And I will say both of these books also had overlap. Like they both talked about the importance of being in the present moment. And like I said, I never really fully understood what the ego meant, but this book really clarified it for me and allowed me to actually see all of its different facets and the depths of our ego and like how far it really does stretch. So this one really helped me in terms of um, teaching me what the ego truly is. And this one also talks a ton about elevating consciousness as well. This one I definitely would say super spiritual, um, super philosophical book. And this one definitely helped me to overall elevate my consciousness and like as I get into my spiritual journey like that's what I think the ultimate goal is as to how can we raise our consciousness raise our vibration individualistically and then also obviously as a collective in hopes to when we are doing that on the individual scale as well so I really love his his books because I really did feel like it was expanding who I was opening my mind elevating my consciousness all that sort of stuff um, when I would read his stuff I will say he does refer to God a lot which I personally liked. If you guys didn't know, I was raised pretty Catholic. I went to a private Catholic school. So I've always been faithful, right? In terms of God. Now it's kind of more so in terms of overall, like 
holistic spirituality and just like kind of a higher power and like the connectedness of all life. But still, I still enjoyed it. And I thought it was interesting. I guess that he still referred to God and he kind of also more so used God as a word to kind of represent source. And I guess that higher power, not necessarily the like personalized figure that we normally think of when we think of God. Um, but there's some really amazing lessons and takeaways in here. He talks about detachment, what it means to fully surrender the present moment, like I said, and like the resistance to things and resisting to the present moment and how you need to let that go. Um, it talks about how form and how we want things to take form. And that's like our ego trying to label and categorize things. Um, it talks a lot about acceptance as well. And, um, it talks about the pain body, something that a kind of a term that he kind of coined um, and how like our negative emotions and negative experiences, if we don't release them, if we don't surrender and let them go and we keep holding that resistance to those instances, they will kind of manifest in our energy field, in our pain body. And we carry that hard, heavy, negative energy with us. So that's a super interesting topic that he talked about in here that I haven't ever seen be brought up by anyone else or in any other books that I read. Um, so this one, super great. Can't grow with this. This I feel like is a must read. I'm going to say it. It's a must read. So this is a kind of a blip it on how um, the emotions are in relation to the ego. And it basically previously right before this blurb, I'm going to tell you, it's explains how like negative emotions literally manifest into like illness and sickness in the body. So it says, do positive emotions have the opposite effect on the physical body? Do they strengthen the immune system, invigorate and heal the body? They do indeed, but we need to d differentiate between positive emotions that are ego generated and deeper emotions that emanate from your natural state of connectedness with being positive emotions generated by the ego already contain within themselves their opposite into which they can quickly turn here are some examples what the ego calls love is possessiveness and addictive clinging that can turn into hate within a second anticipation about an upcoming event which which is the ego's overvaluation of future easily turns into its opposite let down or disappointment when the event is over or doesn't fulfill the ego's expectations Praise and recognition make you feel alive and happy one day. Being criticized and ignored make you dejected and unhappy the next. The pleasure of a wild party turns into bleakness and hangover the next morning. There is not good without bad, no high without low. Ego-generated emotions are derived from the mind's identification with external factors which are, of course, all unstable and liable to change at any moment. The deeper emotions are not really emotions at all, but states of being. Emotions exist within the realm of opposites. States of being can be obscured, but they have no opposite. They emanate from within you as the love, joy, and peace that are aspects of your true nature. I loved that a lot. So this part is super interesting and kind of speaks about how like your ego identifies ego in other people. So it says how you react to people and situations, especially when challenges arise, is the best indicator of how deeply you know yourself. The more limited, the more narrowly egoic the view of yourself, the more you will see, focus on, and react to the egoic limitations, the unconsciousness in others. Their faults or what you perceive as their faults become to you their identity. This means you will see only the ego in them and thus strengthen the ego in yourself. Instead of looking through the ego in others, you are looking at the ego. Who is looking at the ego? The ego in you. Very unconscious people experience their own ego through its reflection in others. When you realize that what you react to in others is also in you and sometimes only in you, you begin to become aware of your own ego. At that stage, you may also realize that you were doing to others what you thought others were doing to you. You cease seeing yourself as a victim. Like, okay, we're all exposed. Don't lie. It's getting so dark in here because the sun's going down. So I kind of need to hurry up. <laughs> so then next is the power of now. Same author. Like I said, there's a lot of overlap between them. This one really talks about the power of becoming present and the power that's in the present moment um, and just not utilizing tasks as like just means to the end, like actually enjoying what you're doing. And this was kind of like the first book that really made it clear to me that like when you truly create from like your flow state in the present moment and you focus on your process and what you're actually doing and not just being so 
hyper focused on arriving at a destination like that's when you create your best most high quality work Um, it also talks a lot about the ego in there as well so it also helps to kind of decipher between the ego and the higher self as well Again, talks about surrendering, talks about letting go and just like releasing resistance to the present moment because it basically touches on the fact that like a lot of our suffering comes from us um, really resisting what is and what's in our present moment. So that really changed the perspective for me and helped me like fully grasp the principle of acceptance and surrendering and like releasing resistance to the present moment because when you do that, you realize that like nothing has power over you anymore um, when you kind of sit in that sea of consciousness if you will another huge reason why I loved this book which kind of was honestly I would say the the star of this book is that it talked about letting emotions pass through you and how to observe your emotions and not actually identify with them it's kind of similar with the untethered soul in that regard but super 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 insightful and also super helpful so I'm going to read this. I also want to say is a must read. So let's see what we got here in terms of some blurbs. I also have an obnoxious amount of things <laughs> underlined in this book, like so many things. Okay. It says, this is called surrender. Surrender is not weakness. There is great strength in it. Only a surrendered person has spiritual power. Through surrender, you will be free internally of the situation. You may then find the situation changes without any effort on your part. In any case, you are free. And then also touching on surrender as well. It says surrender, the letting go of mental emotional resistance to what is also becomes a portal into the unmanifested. The reason for this is simple. Inner resistance cuts you off from other people, from yourself, from the world around you. It strengthens the feeling of separateness on which the ego depends for survival. The stronger the feeling of separateness, the more you are bound to the manifested, to the world of separate forms. The more you are bound to the world of form, the harder and more impenetrable your form identity becomes comes the portal the portal is closed and you are cut off from the inner dimension the dimension of depth in the state of surrender your form identity softens and becomes somewhat transparent as it were so the unmanifested can shine through you so it kind of talks about in the book like the manifested um being closed form separateness all that's like egoic in the 3d world and kind of the limitations of our mind but like the unmanifested remaining soft remaining open um the oneness of things the unity that's technically like our higher self our higher consciousness the 5d the spiritual realm that's kind of what he's like referring to there Okay, there's literally there's literally so many good things in this book. I'm struggling to figure out which one I want to read to you. But okay, this one is talking about how to let an emotion um, pass through you. So this is kind of speaking on like a normal everyday instance that would cause a lot of resistance and frustration and how to let it fresh flow through you. So it says... As an, inter- as an alternative to dropping a negative reaction, you can make it... M- a m- Even the slightest irritation is significant and needs to be acknowledged and looked at. Otherwise, it will be a cumulative buildup of unobserved reactions. As I said before, you may be able to just drop it once you realize that you don't want to have this energy field inside of you and that it serves no purpose. But then make sure that you drop it completely. If you cannot drop it, just accept that it is there and take your attention into the feeling as I pointed out earlier. As an alternative to dropping a negative reaction, you can make it disappear by imagining yourself becoming transparent to the external cause of the reaction. I recommend that you practice this with little, even trivial things at first. Let's say you are sitting quietly at home. Suddenly, there is a penetrating sound of a car alarm from across the street. Irritation arises. What is the purpose of the irritation? None whatsoever. Why did you create it? You didn't. The mind did. That was totally automatic, totally unconscious. Why did the mind create it? Because it holds the unconscious belief that its resistance, which you experience as negativity of unhappiness in some form, will somehow dissolve the undesirable condition. This, of course, is a delusion. The resistance that it creates, the irritation of anger, or anger in this case, is far more disturbing than the original cause that it is attempting to dissolve. All this can be transformed into spiritual practice. Feel yourself becoming transparent as it were without the solidity. Feel yourself becoming transparent as it were without the solidity of a material body. Now allow the noise or whatever caused a negative reaction to pass right through you. It is no longer hitting a solid wall inside of you. As I said, practice with little things first. The car alarm, the the dog barking, the child screaming, the traffic jam. Instead of having a wall of resistance inside of you that gets constantly and painfully hit by these things that should quote unquote not be happening, let everything pass through you. 
Somebody says something to you that's rude or designated to hurt. Instead of going into unconscious reaction and negativity such as attack, defense, or withdrawal, let it pass right through you. Offer no resistance. It is as if there is nobody there to get hurt anymore. That is forgiveness. In this way, you become invulnerable. You can still tell that person that his or her behavior is unacceptable if that is what you choose to do. But that person no longer has the power to control your inner inner state. You are then in your power. I love that. So that's what I mean. Kind of also like that's why I love these books because they're not only like spiritual and, you know, I don't know, like in that whole realm of like consciousness, but it's also just like how to handle yourself better, how to look at things differently and like puts things in perspective of what's truly matters. And like, that's why I love it. Okay. Last but not least, number six, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you haven't heard of this, you've been living under a rock. (laughs) No, but seriously, this is the book that I recommend to everyone. This is the top most impactful book that I have read. If I recommend anyone starts with any book at all, start with this book. I feel like this is the foundation. This is the first book that I read that opened my mind up which down the road led me into spirituality and consciousness and awareness and all that sort of stuff. This book is everything. It's a life changer. This, why it was so impactful for me is that this was the first book that really truly put things in perspective for me and made me understand and realize and become aware that the mind is an absolute, that our thoughts don't define us, that there's, that like everything we think that we know to be the truth isn't like it's just what we were taught as when we were younger like the whole concept of the book is like agreements like that when we grow up when we're little all of us even just in society we all made agreements that to give something a definition or truth like for example we all agreed that we're going to call a tree a tree and that's what it means we're all going to define that this is what is pretty and this is what is ugly this is what's desirable and this is what isn't none of that is the truth we just agreed to have that code I guess if you will to explain it And it just kind of put so much in perspective for me that like nothing that we're saying is the definite truth. Like there is space for questioning. It's just what we all agreed upon, but it's not what it actually is. Like everything just is what it is. That's the only truth. And we're the ones that agreed to give these things different meanings and once I like kind of became like understood that it like put so much in perspective for me it also made me aware that there's like space between like our thoughts and our emotions and just like between us who we are in our mind again um and it also like I said it introduced like the concept of subconscious beliefs and programmings like I said of like when we're raised like we're just taught things and it turns into our subconscious programming beliefs that we think is the truth but it's not it's just what something someone told us um another reason why I love this book is that it really taught me the power of the word and that what we say and how we speak to not only ourselves but to others and just about things it manifests in more ways than one and it holds so much power so it just touches on very like basic foundational things that goes on in people's minds of like how we think um and it touches on things that's responsible for a lot of our suffering honestly that's like that's a result of our own doing so the four agreements are to be impeccable with your word don't take anything personally don't make assumptions and always do your best so I'm telling you, you just have to read this. Um, It has like, it just also showed me that like everyone has different perspectives and viewpoints to see life. And like, it just is super, super, super interesting. So I absolutely love this one. Again, it's not very long, super easy, quick read. And it completely changed the game for me. Not even gonna lie. So here we go. It says, so this is under the first agreement, be impeccable with your word. It says, if I love myself, I will express that love in my interactions with you. And then I am being impeccable with the word because that action will produce a like reaction. If I love you, then you will love me. If I insult you, you will insult me. If I have a gratitude for you, you will have gratitude for me. If I'm selfish with you, you'll be selfish with me. If I use the word to put a spell on you, you are going to put a spell on me. Figure. (laughs) Being impeccable with your word is the correct use of your energy. It means to use your energy in the direction of truth and love for yourself. If you make an agreement with yourself to be impeccable with your word, just with that intention, the truth will manifest through you and clean all of the emotional poison that exists within you. But making this agreement is difficult because we have learned to do precisely the opposite. We have learned to lie as a habit of our communication with others and more importantly with ourselves. We are not impeccable with the word. The power of the word is completely misused in hell. We use the word to curse, to blame, to find guilt, to destroy of course we all you of course we all use it in the right way but not too often mostly we use the word to spread our personal poison to express anger jealousy anger and hate the word is pure magic the most powerful gift we have as humans and we use it against ourselves so 
that's what I mean when it just talks about how important it is to like be intentional with our word and the things that we're saying. Here it also says through the word you express your creative power. It is through the word that you manifest everything. Regardless of what language you speak, your intent manifests through the word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will all be manifested through the the word. This is a really good one. This is under the third agreement to never make assumptions. It says we make the assumption that everyone sees life the way we do. We assume that others think the way we think, feel the way we feel, judge the way we judge, and abuse the way we abuse. This is the biggest assumptions that humans make and this is why we have a fear of being ourselves around others because we think everyone else will judge us, victimize us, abuse us, and blame us as we do ourselves. So even before others have a chance to reject us, we have already rejected ourselves, which that's like, okay, wow, wake up call reflection. And lastly, I absolutely love this. This is, I think the last chapter, it says heaven on earth, the new dream. It says, I want you to forget everything you have learned in your whole life. This is the beginning of a new understanding, a new dream. The dream you are living is your creation. It is your perception of reality that you can change at any time. You have the power to create hell and you have the power to create heaven. Why not dream of different dream? Why not use your mind, your imagination, and your emotions to dream heaven? Just use your imagination and a tremendous thing will happen. Imagine that you have the ability to see the world with different, different eyes whenever you choose. Each time you open your eyes, you see this world around you in a different way. Close your eyes now and then open them and look outside. What you will see is love coming out of the trees, love coming out of the sky, love coming out of the light. You will perceive love from everything around you. This is a state of bliss. So that's just all of the like all of the I just I just haven't looked at all of those books together and like there was so much beauty and just amazing energy that just emanates from all of those books and I just can't believe they're all in one place right now so that was beautiful okay you guys that was a way longer episode than I was expecting <laughs> um but in all honesty you can't go wrong with any one of these books they completely changed my life I reading has changed my life so please just choose one of these books give it a go I recommend starting with the four agreements would be a great one to start with that's not super lengthy and will really open up the your mindset to look at things in these different ways to kind of set you up of how to look at these books and what's amazing after reviewing all of those and looking those books all together at once they all had those same foundational principles of like unity oneness how we're not separate um higher consciousness and kind of creating space how like everyone is able to look at things from a different perspective so i just love being able to see that now from even an outside point of view and seeing the consistencies and similarities across the books um, which I think is super interesting. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. The affirmation that I have for you guys today, this doesn't really have anything to do with anything. I just have personally been really liking this affirmation. It says, I am a powerful presence with love and value to share. I am a powerful presence with love and value to share. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys got something out of this episode. I really hope you guys try out one of these books. Let me know if you do. Tag me on Instagram at LiveFit. I would love to see you guys reading these in your stories or whatnot. So I'm sending you guys so, so much love. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.